Marathon, where all the proceeds go to Doctors Without Borders. I've got a couple donations I'm going to read through here. Uh, we've got $30 from Nataki. Hey guys, just wanted to say I love watching these amazing runs. This is the first year I've been able to catch it live on stream, so I figured I'd donate to celebrate the occasion. Oh, and kill the animals. Lord of Custard donated $5. Kazooie showing why you should never skip leg day, where you, you too many one day need to carry a bear around for about an hour to save some frames. We've got $20 from Aku no Oiji. First time watching GDQ Live. Banjo Tui was one of my favorite rare games. Kick some witchy butt. We've got $50 from Hackamus. Supporting charity and reliving my childhood at the same time? Couldn't be better. Keep up the great work and good luck on the run. Here's to Chrono Trigger 100%. And we've got $8 from Wooly. AGDQ and SGDQ are awesome events for a great cause. Here's a humble $8 towards naming the trainer DXDYDZ for potential missing no glitch shenanigans post speedrun. We got $20 from Ducky the God. Second time donating to a GDQ and a Banjo Kazooie is my favorite game, so I figured I'd donate during the sequel. Money goes towards a link to the past 100% uh, SM64 race and of course killing those animals because we already saved them at AGDQ, no need to do it again. $20 from Slice and Dice. I'll donate some more for two of my favorite N64 titles one after another. I'll be taking notes through all of Banjo Tui. These tricks are awesome, and if the one I found casually is used, I'll be exceptionally excited. Good luck to the remaining runs. Let's see that Chrono Trigger 100%. $50 from Anonymous. Great run so far. This is my second year donating, and it's always awesome to see a speed run of Banjo Tui. Best of luck to the runner. It's $20 from the Master DS146. Tui hype. It's good to have it back one year later with two hours shaved off. Gonna be a great run. I won't be watching now because I'm falling asleep, but for sure I'll be watching tomorrow. Sing Gato's song. We've got 1337 from My Name is Gato. I have metal joints. <laughs> Please put this towards Chrono Trigger 100% run. I can already feel the excitement of reading HP MP Restored, but you're still hungry. We've got $30 from Hexapra. The bear and the bird got me into gaming. The pillar jumping in Maya, Maya, Mayahem, excuse me, had me on the edge of my seat. It's so cool to hear that new techniques are being found all the time.
Hello everybody, you're watching Summer Games Done Quick 2015. I'm the Sound Defense and I'm going to be hosting for our next run, which is Donkey Kong 64, No Levels Early, which is being run by 2DOS. Uh, coming up not too long after this, you're going to have Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga with Alta Biscuit. Then later on, Saints Row Gat Out of Hell by Bystander Tim. And for Saints Row, we have a couple of donation incentives. Uh, you can choose the character, choose the ending, or decide whether or not to play the musical number. I'm gonna get flack for skipping the DK rap there, but you'll hear it again very, very soon. Are you getting ready? Are we nearly done or are you getting I ready? am all set, so whenever you are ready. Huh? They'll, they turn up the game sound when the... When the yeah, they'll get game sound out there. Oh well, no one cares about you, Nas. <laughs> they, they can't even hear you. It's like I'm arguing with nobody right now. <laughs> <laughs> there might be someone you can see off to the left of the couch. Actually, let me see something quick. I need the brightness turned up for the TV. Is there a remote? Okay, well, we're. Turn up the brightness on the TV. Is there a remote somewhere? Come enjoy these nice pause menu tunes. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're getting this set up. Man. I'm going to read a couple of donation comments. Oh, I need to turn up the brightness for the remote or the TV. All right, yeah. we have uh, $200 from Anonymous. It says, love watching GDQ every time it's on. Keep on running. <laughs> Fifty dollar donations from another anonymous. <laughs> First time catching GDC live. Great Banjo Tooie speedrun. Been trying to catch as much as I can. Can't wait for the Chrono Trigger speedrun. Oh, oh crap! We can't do that. We need sleep <laughs> anyway. Not Keep leave up game the awesome mode because that's going to be a bad thing. <laughs> okay. There we go. Let's crank that all the way up. This is a dark game. Ooh. Okay. It's not Doom 64. <laughs> Okay. That'll be fine. Is this um, two just needs to see. Uh, yeah. Is this still in game mode? Oh, uh, you were messing with it. Is it this? No, one? we didn't change it. It's all good. Okay. Okay. It was well, how it was when we were I'll be able to take it. Yeah, it's fine. This will work. Well, you'll see it. Rip tiny. All right, now I think we're all good. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Three, two, one, go. And I already made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a sec. All right. All right. Let's go. <laughs> Already made a mistake again. There it is. So the first thing I do is turn off the sound because I hate all the soundtracks in this game except for the DK rap. <laughs> so this is DK64 no levels early. This game is severely broken, so we decided to create a middle category for the game. This is pretty similar to Super Mario 64 70 Star. So the first thing we're going to do is talk to Cranky to spawn the training barrels. DK sounds really weird when you can only hear his like rolls and grunts. Just <clears throat> all over the place. You know what? I, I can't handle this no noise <laughs> crap. I'm just going to quit. No more speedruns. <laughs> I just want to listen to the DK rap, guys. That's all I want to do. So we're going to go, uh, go ahead and do that. <laughs> it's a good song. Yeah. All right, who likes cutscenes? I love cutscenes. Let's watch some. All right.
Wait, wait, what? What happened? Does multiplayer work? Hold on. Um, what is going on? Oh, let's try another cutscene. Oh, okay, here we go. Um, okay. Let's watch this cutscene with the DK app in the background. I'm glad the game lets you play this song during cutscenes. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be doing this right now if it didn't let me play the DK rap. <laughs> Spooky. All right, all right. Good cutscene. Good cutscene. All right. I guess the cave's boss is next. Let's go ahead and watch. More DK rap. Oh no, the DK rap's gone. Oh no. Oh well. I like that. This song's good too. I guess, I guess it's fine. It's very exciting, very aggressive. Hey, this, this one's even better. I like this one. Let's stick with this one. Oh, uh, what? Um, Alta, can you try a multiplayer mode here? I just want to see if it works. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what? What'd you do? I, you cheated. No, you cheated. It, you're a dirty glitch user. Are you serious, dude? Yeah. I know. I know this game inside. I know what you did. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. I guess I'm watching another cutscene because this guy's. What'd you do? I didn't do anything. Are you serious? Let's try this again. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Unbelievable. I can't believe I'm playing with this guy. Yeah. Let's just watch some more. Okay, that one didn't even work through that one. All right, here's another cutscene. I love cutscenes better than speedruns. All right, let's. I'm gonna try this. I'll give you one more shot. Okay. Okay. I didn't even have my hand on the controller. Okay. 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 Come on, man. <laughs> All right. Let's play. I'm gonna play a single player game. Any suggestions? Dude, DK Arcade. That's my favorite one. Dude, great idea. Great idea. Okay. How high can I get? Okay, let's go. Don't get too high. All right, I'm already bored. <laughs> well, I, I guess I run out of things to do, but I mean, if the game wants me to speedrun, it'll let me speedrun. I'll just kind of sit here and see what happens. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's not letting me speedrun. <laughs> that was bad RNG. I'll explain that in a second. <laughs> RNG before the speedrun starts. Well, if it's not going to let me speedrun, okay, there we go. Okay, so what that was, that entire sequence of events I did was called main menu moves. And basically, um, you saw me start not on file select, but on selecting the intro story. If you stop the intro story about a second in, the music will stop playing, which uh, signifies that I properly executed the glitch. And um, the intro story will be constantly playing in the background, even though I stopped it. Um, the glitch lasts 4 minutes and 24 seconds, because that's how long the intro story is. You can see I have three water moments now. Basically, the main menu moves glitch, um, it gives me all the upgrades in the entire game for free. So I no longer have to visit Cranky, Candy, or... Uh... Yeah. I no longer have to visit Cranky, Candy, or Funky for any upgrades at all. And there is, unfortunately, uh, some side effects to that. First off, I cannot pause the game. The game doesn't let me pause. Um, and the reason for that is because the game thinks I'm still in the main menu. There's like two separate modes for the game. There's like the main story mode and there's a main menu mode. And in the main menu, you like don't like pause the game. The game doesn't save and you don't take damage. So those effects I just named will be happening in the speedrun right now. Um, another thing I did in the main menu moves list was watch the boss cutscenes. Since I have to wait 4 minutes and 24 seconds, um, I, I had to sit around and do stuff. And um, watching those cutscenes in the boss uh, mystery menu will let me clear them for free. So now when I fight the bosses, I don't have to watch those cutscenes anymore. 
And the reason why some of them were fading out at random spots is because the intro story is divided into several sections. And when a fade out happens in, a fade out to the new section happens in the intro story, then um, a fade out will happen in the cutscene that I'm watching. And I can't watch a cutscene again until I enter the multiplayer mode, which is what I was doing there. Uh, but Alta did press start on the second controller. Does that now mean this is a co-op run? Perhaps, we'll see. Um, uh, more on the intro story glitch here. Um, I was getting a little upset at the RNG at the beginning. Um, the final thing that like actually pulls me into the, may, uh, the uh, story mode, I need to have a cutscene playing in the main menu at 4 minutes and 24 seconds into the run. I messed up the timing a little bit at the beginning because I forgot to start a timer for mine. I need to see when the time starts. Um, and there are some things that can happen in the main menu where a cutscene doesn't play. And what you saw there was, like, it was slowly fading into night. And for some reason, uh, the game doesn't count that as a cutscene. So what I had to do was go back into the mystery menu and back out so I could reset the cutscene timer. The thing that actually gave me all of the upgrades was playing the DK Arcade. For one reason or another, just by playing that, the game assumes that you've like, done a bunch of other things and it gives you all the moves in the game. I don't know why, it just does. It does it for the cranky and candy upgrades. For the funky upgrades, I had to enter multiplayer mode. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Good start. Good start. <laughs> All right, what I was trying to do there, I was trying to hit the loading zone at the same time as grabbing the golden banana. You can skip that little golden banana dance that DK does there. Fortunately, I totally beefed that, so I guess you watch the dance. Well, that's a good thing you're invincible. Yep. I c <laughs> and again, I take no damage because I uh, main menu mode glitch is active. All right, so here's Jungle Japes, so I'm going to do a glitch right off the bat. This push will push me out of bounds. If I align myself correctly, there we go. So I'm just going to do some little magic here, and I am in a different path by the main area. I touched the warp there for the first time because that allows me to skip a really long cutscene. I play a very short cutscene, the uh, You Touch the Warp for the First Time cutscene, on top of a very long cutscene where it shows where Diddy is in Jungle Japes. That saves 20 seconds. There, I did a glitch called Swim Through Vertical Walls. If I go into first person mode and back out, I can just swim through walls. Yeah, that, it just works. Just like nothing in this game. Nothing works. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the walls are pretty much just a decoration for most of the game. There's a lot of wall abuse, so if you find that triggering, please don't watch the run. <laughs> Here is a game called Boboon Blast. Um, I wouldn't be able to do this game if I bought it, the uh, upgrade from Cranky to play this game, but as you can see, I never visited Cranky, so that kind of proves that the main menu moves glitch worked. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's try that again. By the way, the input delay on the VC version, for whatever reason, is really bad. It's almost about a second. So this is a lot harder than it looks. I can show off the in I can show the controller to the camera after I uh, complete this. All right, if you can kind of see the camera, I don't know if you can, but it's really that bad. <laughs> it's not a joke. And I have to deal with it the whole game. There's nothing I can do. It's not, your, it's not the monitor. It's not the uh, uh, Wiimote. It's the emulation built into the Wii U. None of the other N64 games are like that. I'm not sure why this one in particular gives the input delay, but that's just how it is. Yeah. 
So this being no levels early, you actually have to go ahead and go around and collect all the bananas you need to get to the next level and kill the boss, right? Yeah, that is correct. In the any percent run of this game, for one reason or another, the game programs it so that you only need keys three and eight to spawn the final boss. It's not a glitch, that's just how they made it. So in this particular run, run I, or in this particular run, I grab all eight keys and get 100 gold bananas. And the 100 gold bananas requirement comes from the uh, B lockers that block your way from entering each level. As you can see, I have the sniper scope, which I got through main menu moves. I can hit those switches a lot quicker than I normally would without the sniper scope. I can do some pretty neat shots there. You might be noticing I'm playing on the um, North American version of the game. It's actually the fastest version. The reason for this is because the North American version came out first, which means in the Japanese and PAL regions, they patched several glitches on those, so those are way slower than the English version, or the North American version. You're also playing on the uh, VC version. Is that mostly due to the lag? Yeah, the N64 version has notorious lag problems. Wii U VC saves nine minutes in this category alone. It's insanely ridiculous how much time is saved just from lag. And it's actually different too, like the lag in the N64 is used for certain glitches and clips. Yes, um, there's the main thing that we I can no longer do on the Wii U VC version is orange clips. Oranges in the N64 version lag the game really badly and you can use that lag to abuse your Kong to clip through walls. Speaking of clipping, I'm gonna clip through this bridge right here, just like that. And the reason why um, tons of lag would make your characters clip through walls is that DK64 has a mechanic where the more the game lags, the more sped up your character would be. So by laying the game really, really badly, your Kong would be sped up um, however much the algorithm uh, what made it to speed up the Kong. So just by laying the game, you could go through any wall you want to in the game, but that is no longer present. It's not really a big deal, though. There are several tricks that we can do to circumvent that issue. Unfortunately, the, the tricks that it gave also made the game slower as a whole, because with, that, with the lag, you can do stuff, but it makes every other part of the game go slower. Yeah. Um, like, especially the boss fights in particular, they go very, very slowly on N64. And if you've never seen the Wii U VC version compared to the N64 version, it's going to be pretty ridiculous when you see a boss fight for the first time. DK is just doing some, uh, some you know, air swimming. Oops. <laughs> if you damage yourself into a golden banana, you can skip the dance. The beaver, unfortunately, missed for me, so I didn't get it there. This is one of my favorite glitches in the game and one of the reasons why I run this game. If I can get it. There you go. This is called a moon kick. <laughs> <laughs> Monkeys can fly. We can use that trick to abuse the no wall corner of this room and get into the boss room right away. And as you can see, I don't need to watch the boss cutscene here because I skipped it. Good dodge. Thank you. <laughs> I did a lot of work for that one. If you place the barrels right next to his head before he shoots, once he's done with the shooting phase, uh, it will explode immediately and will end the phase right away. Um, that strap was found by the Japanese runner Signa. He is the any percent world record holder. The reason why I'm getting hit by him right now is because it ends the rolling phase immediately. There you go. Easy as that. Have you ever uh, 
found out how many times the words Donkey Kong are said throughout the run. Someone wants to count, be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. More or less than O Banana. <laughs> As you can see, I'm done with the level, but I can't pause the game like I said earlier, so I can't pause exit to leave. I need to go to the portal at the beginning of the level in order to leave a level. And that's why not pausing the game is one of the downsides. It also makes a few sections a little bit dangerous because if you can't save and quit, you could get stuck. Do you ever regain the ability to pause? We'll get to that later. Yeah. In the meantime, I'm going to be handing in key two here. We got time for don a little bit of donations. All right, we have uh, $100 from Swordplay. Who says 800 Reese's peanut butter cups is tempting, but saving lives is more important? We have another $100 from Becca139, who says, Oh, banana. <laughs> You'll be hearing that a lot this run, don't worry. We have uh, $20 from Mr. Harrison, who says, Donkey Kong 64 is one of my favorite games of all time. Good luck to reach the million dollars. You are awesome, guys. All right, so after opening Aztec, I'm just gonna go ahead and go straight there. So m moving around in this game seems to be like a lot of optimization of just basic moves, like knowing when to roll, knowing when to do those jump kicks for extra height. Yeah, this run in particular, this game actually used to be very, very trick-based. Um, but with the Wii U VC version and Orange Clips now gone, it's become a lot more optimizing your movement and optimizing the rather easy tricks in this run. Not really saying all the tricks are easy, but it's a lot of movement in particular. All right, so Angry Aztec starts off by getting a blueprint. And then immediately after getting this blueprint, we're going to go ahead and free Tiny right away. Uh, if you don't know your DK64, you can use blueprints to get golden bananas from Snide the Weasel. Yeah, um, I'll be collecting these blueprints, and they will give me... I will stop by Snide's later, and he'll give me golden bananas for them. Many, many golden bananas. <laughs> There we go. Most of them are pretty quick. I actually need to collect all 40 of them. Most of them are quick, but some of them are not. The blueprints also give you an extra minute in hideout helm, which is nice for a uh, casual playthrough, but you won't need the extra 40 minutes from all the 40 <laughs> blueprints. Are you calling my run casual? Well, <laughs> all right. I mean, prove me wrong here. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying, you could have been playing multiplayer, but instead you bailed out for the glitch in the run. Well, I would have played multiplayer except Alta cheated, so... Hey, I now. Don't. He wasn't even holding the controller. I still don't believe He you. buffered it. I he don't buffered those, those cheats into the N64 controller. That's true, you saw the lag. <laughs> I know cheating when I see it. And I'm sure Studio knows cheating when, he's che when he sees it. <laughs> Cheat big. Cheat big. All right, I kind of lied about freeing Tiny immediately. I need to get this blueprint as well. There we go. All right, so here's Tiny, and once I get to her, you will see that she is a not very smart Kong. <laughs> All right, so this is called a ledge clip. If I buffer my movements with the first person mode, I can just fall through out of bounds on a ledge right there. If I travel a little bit in this direction out of bounds, I will eventually see the sparkles of a golden banana. There you go. 
Um, I can just walk out. I don't know why Tiny doesn't just walk out as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I spelled Kong wrong. Better fix it. But the reason why I uh, hit O first is because if you, you're normally supposed to hit that switch to the bottom left of Tiny's cage right there. However, that's, it uh, triggers a very, very long cutscene that raises platforms so you can hit these. However, you can just backflip on top of these letters and hit them this way. But the K isn't technically active until you hit that switch by Tiny's cage. We can circumvent this by hitting the O energy first because the game will then assume that, oh, you are hitting O. You must have hit K. So it resets the K and you can now hit it again. And not only is Tiny now free, she just warps out anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a nifty assume the vertical walls trick. I can get back to the entrance of the temple temple right away. One thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of the run, the main menu moves glitch does not give me ammo, instrument power, or crystals at all. So I start with zero of them. My counts for those particular items are very, very low throughout the run, and I need to make sure that my counts aren't low because I don't want to run out of crystals or ammo at particular spots. The Zinger is my best friend, just like that. He always hits me. Okay. He hit me twice, cool. We'll talk a little bit about movement in this game. For Lanky, Tiny, and uh, Chunky, the fastest form of I say Lanky, I meant lasagna, sorry. The fastest form of movement is long jumping. And for Diddy Kong, you could say I was doing cartwheels. Um, if you do a cartwheel jump cancel, that is actually Diddy Kong's fastest form of movement if you jump right away out of a cartwheel. And D uh, DK's fastest form of movement is just rolling around. I didn't really explain how moon kicks worked either because I was explaining other stuff, but um, moon kicks work because you are doing a aerial attack right when Donkey Kong is very close to the ground. The game doesn't know what to do in that situation, so it just sends DK flying into the air. Don't ask. Here's another pretty easy boss fight. Just avoid the fireballs and hit him with the TMT barrel three times. I can pick up the barrel in this next cycle and avoid the fireballs to hit him quicker. I'm not going to be doing that for the last phase though, because for some reason the key doesn't spawn sometimes if you hit him really close like that. And obviously that's not a very good thing. There we go. You can see that I was supposed to fight this boss with Diddy, but I actually fought it with DK. You can fight essentially any boss in the game with any character you want because of the clips I've been doing. Here's another trick similar to the bush push I did in Jungle Japes, is I've, except I'm doing with the banana on top of Fungi's uh, hut. I can get to this bonus barrel right away. Here is the Spooky Maze GB. Shout out to Ring Rush, who dubbed this the Spooky Maze GB. Well, I don't know if this is really that spooky. I think Ring Rush begs to differ on that one. <laughs> All right, I'm going to be doing a tricky orange throw here, and hopefully I skip the dance. All right, I skipped it. Nice. nice. That's pretty difficult. The walls in this room are slanted pretty oddly, so getting that is really good. I'm going to avoid Strong Kong here, as I don't take damage, and I don't ever use Strong Kong in the game. I get a cutscene from using Strong Kong for the first time, and just not using it at all will avoid it. 
Strong Kong, by the way, is the uh, invincibility for DK. All right, that was really nice. That's a slope clip. That was really good, actually. Um, if you just roll into a slope, or like move at a faster movement speed than walking into a slope, you'll just clip through it. There was actually a myth that that was actually influenced by leg, but as you can see, I did it pretty easily with no leg at all. Yeah, I remember when uh, this was coming out on Wii U just a few months ago, and there were like debates and discussion about whether or not the game would even work, whether you'd be able to speedrun this version, or if it'd just be the same as the N64. This game really doesn't work, so it's a good point. By definition, it technically works, but that's about all it's got going for it. All right, so that's the only golden I need from the Five Door Temple. I'm gonna avoid the quicksand here. There we go, another moon kick to this roof that doesn't exist. Oop. Oh my god, okay. Try it again. <laughs> Reminder that moon kicks are frame perfect tricks, but also reminder that this game runs at 2 FPS, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, it's uh, Linky. Yeah, this is Linguini. Um, this is the worst Kong in the game. People are just like, oh, Lasagna is really cool. He's super awesome. He makes funny noises, but he really has like the worst forms of movement. He has the worst tricks. It's just overall a terrible Kong. Didn't Luigi also like kill a lot of runs? In yeah, some of the he tricks? tends to kill most of the runs I have. All right, as you can see, I did swim the vertical wall straight to his cage, and if I slowly inch toward his golden banana, I can grab it from out of bounds, just like that. I can shoot his switch from behind. Well, not like that. There we go. Unfortunately, I do have to free him in this run because he does have plenty of fast golden bananas and I need him to free Chunky as well. All right, I missed that backflip. You can backflip and bounce from there. It's a little tricky. All right, whatever. I'll just go up this way. That was supposed to be another moon kick. All right, so I'm going to be going into an area where there's, like, lava. The first, like, lava I was swimming in in this area is actually, like, a lava pool or, like, lava water. I don't really know. But you can, like, swim through it, and you don't, like, die or anything. You just take damage, but I don't take damage, so it doesn't really mean anything. The lava in this game is actually really inconsistent with, with what it does to you. Some of the lava, it only takes one slice of damage. Some lava insta-kills you. This lava in particular, it doesn't kill you. It just You get one melon slice of damage, but since I'm in main menu mode, I don't take damage at all. Seems to be mostly the second half of the game that has the instant kill lava. Oh, I do want to mention that I still will get insta-killed even though I can't take damage. The insta-kill trigger is different than the damage trigger. Yuck. All right, so this is actually a pretty new gold banana that we routed in. Conditioner found out that doing this gold banana is fast, but I hate him now because he routed in another lanky gold banana. So, anti shoutouts to you. I, w I want to avoid killing that other Kremlin. He will trigger a cutscene if I kill him, or if I kill both of them. So I want to avoid killing him. If I stand in front of the switch, I won't be able to. Or he won't ever get me. In case you're wondering, this is the uh, memory matching goofy sound game. Yeah, uh, the colors match up, but the sounds match up as well. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> He's excited for your banana. <laughs> this is one of the slower blueprints, actually. 
Like I said before, I do need four blueprints for something at the end of the run, but I don't want to spoil the surprise, so I will keep it a secret for now. Like I mentioned in Japes, I cannot pause ex exit to leave the levels. Instead, I have to go back to the portal. I'm really far from the entrance portal right now, so a way to get there quickly is to go out of bounds and go as far out of bounds as you can to void out, and this will warp you to the beginning of the level. Pretty quick and easy. I've noticed that when you're killing some of the blueprint guys, sometimes you'll just use ammo, other times you'll just go ahead and like melee them down. What's uh, the difference? Like, Why do you kill someone way? Okay, so the ammo in this game isn't all the same. All the Kong's ammo do different damage. In particular, DK and Diddy's ammo takes eight shots to kill their particular Kasplats. Chunky's takes five, and Lanky and Tiny's take an obscene amount of ammo. And since I mentioned earlier, I was, I really want to keep my ammo count in check. So I don't want to shoot. I don't want to shoot ammo with Lanky or Tani on the Kasplats. I'm purposely avoiding turning in Key Two right now. I want to get the Skull and Banana first, because after I grab the Skull and Banana, I can just go straight down and turn in the Key, and this will warp me to the beginning after the cutscene. If he triggered the key while he was running around there, he would have to do that whole thing all over again. It would have looked silly and wasted a bunch of time. And again, more donations during this part. Nothing particularly exciting happens. Sure thing. We've got uh, several donors who've noticed the glitchy nature of this game. Professor Bites donates $50. He says, although we miss some of the glitches here, this game is full of them. It's enough to drive even the strongest of Kongs bananas. <laughs> Since Luigi's Mansion has been met, let's do Link to the Past 100%. Shy Ranger donates $15, says, While most games are massive games with a few glitches here and there, Donkey Kong 64 is a massive glitch with some bits of game here and there. <laughs> He's not wrong. Yeah. Isbill donates $50. He says, Great to see a run of DK64 that's so broken. Floors? Who needs them? Gravity? Still debated. Walls, not there if you look close enough. Donation goes to the Super Mario 64 and 8% race. All right, so I don't need to use the platform that was given to me to get to Frantic Factory. Main menu moves have just given me all the moves in the game, so I can just monkey port straight up and go to Factory that way. Additionally, I can get Tiny Kong's Instrument Banana up there. That will spawn chunk, uh, the Hunky Chunky Barrels as well. That will allow me to get some pretty quick bananas later on, as opposed to getting them uh, when I go to Hideout Helm. A lot of these gold bananas do have some dance skips with the orange throwing that I was doing in Angry Aztec, but not a lot of them are like very like practical to do in a speedrun and don't save time at all. Alright, so Frantic Factory, what I want to do first is open the hatch, and then I'm going to do some pretty cool out of bounds stuff. This level changed, at least the intro of it, changed quite a bit from N64 to VC. Yeah, we used to do an orange leg clip right in this lobby that I'm going into here, and that would get us, or that would lead us straight to the production room. Since orange clips no longer work, there is a workaround clip that I'm going to be doing shortly. All right, so this hatch here, if you backflip onto the top of it, you can do like a kick slide and get out of bounds just like so. While I'm out of bounds, I'm going to be going uh, in this direction, and then you need to listen for a sound cue here. 
All right, I missed it. I definitely missed it this way. All right, that cage right there, I want to walk under it. All right, I keep missing it. Come on. Tiny, come on, what are you doing? I promise I'll get it eventually. Tiny, what are you doing? Open the cage. I promise it works. I'm not like making up tricks mid-run. <laughs> All right, this is the angle, this is the one. Oh, there it is, okay. So what that does, for some reason the cage, like, the opening of that cage is like, inf extends infinitely up and infinitely down. So I can just open it while walking underneath it. And straight from there, I can head straight to the production room, and I can do a bunch of stuff up here without turning the production room on. By the way, you may have noticed that he walked through a golden banana there, and it's because that Kongs can't pick up other Kongs golden bananas. So we actually haven't seen that many of them yet, but there's still a lot of bananas you get from these uh, bonus games, which are kind of scattered throughout the game. Additionally, the way DK64 works is that you always have to return to areas with new Kongs or just more Kongs. And you, it's, there's a lot of revisiting, but it's always something else. Good shots on uh, Lasagna, by the way. Yeah, I got the double on Licorice. Very nice. So how many golden bananas are you going to need to get throughout the entire run? I will be collecting 100 total. I don't need them all like right away, but I need to have incre incremental amounts to get into each level. This is a very stupid jump right here. All right, let's just get this. All right. If I miss that golden banana, it actually wastes a minute because I have to climb back up or er, production room and do it again. Oops. A bonus of doing that clip I did earlier was to tag warp four early. This way I don't have to climb production room, I can just warp up right away. And I will use this time to free Chunky. It's good to see the best Kong free. You really think he's the best Kong? I, I mean, well, you're not playing with the Afro skin, so... Well, as long as it's not laser long, I'm fine with that. Again, I have no instrument power right now, so I'm going to go ahead and hit these headphones for something I need the instrument for later. Um, this is another moon kick I'm about to do here. It's called a ledge kick. Ledge kicks are probably the, one of the tougher moon kicks. All right, come on. There it is. Nice. All right, again, it's the same principle as I was talking about earlier. You're doing an aerial attack when DK's right above the ground. It's a lot easier to do them on slopes. Oh, do you get infinite height with those moon kicks, or is it a set amount? You don't actually get infinite anything with that. It's a finite amount of height and a finite amount of distance. I don't know why it goes or acts like it does again. That could be a way to describe most of this game. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to agree with that. All right, so now the production room, production room is on. I can access Chunky's Golden Banana in here as well as DK's. Those are pretty quick Golden Bananas. As well, it gives me a Golden Banana as well, so it's worth it to turn on the production room. And uh, you haven't really been going for the normal bananas because with uh, the clips into the boss rooms, they're almost completely irrelevant. Yeah, there's no reason to go for the, the normal bananas in this particular category. I can go over uh, the reasons why no levels are always creating a bit, but for now, I can come in here and grab a golden banana. 
if I grab this box like this, oh, I missed it. I'll have to do it again. I'm. That's strange. How did I miss that? There it is. Okay. Chucky can pull himself through the box and can grab the gold banana through it without having to do that room the normal way. Back to what I was saying earlier. Any percent of this run is 27 minutes. You can beat the game in 27 minutes because you only need keys 3 and 8. So it's just basically rush to key 8, rush to key 3, fight the final boss. 101% is 6 hours long. So as you can see, the difference between the two categories in time is pretty big. So we decided, hey, let's make a middle category. And No Levels Early was born. We figured it was the best compromise for tricks and things we wanted to collect. But it really is explicitly no levels early. Most of the glitches seem to be allowed, like having all the upgrades or, for example, like never collecting bananas. Yes, as long as you never like enter a level early, it counts. Um, one argument we had in particular was do watching the boss cutscenes at the beginning of the run during main menu moves was entering a level early, but <laughs> we found out in the game code you're not actually entering the level, so it's so loud. Oops, I missed the skip again. All right, so this is gonna be the first boss I fight without DK. The other Kongs can get into the boss rooms early as well. I just need to use a ledge clip instead of the moon kick. For no particular reason, I guess, this is the hardest boss in the game. I don't know why they made it level three. And you're using Tiny for this because of her uh, jumping abilities, right? Yeah, Tiny Kong is definitely the fastest Kong for this battle. Ponytail Twirl makes the fight a lot faster, and the other Kongs just don't have the jumping ability. Alta, do you want to explain how this boss works? Yeah, so Mad Jack will be doing slow jumps if he is one space away from you. So he's going to be... He, uh trying to be on the same space as him or just far enough away to where uh, he will do faster jumps. One of the reasons why this boss is so difficult is that if you get hit off like I did just there, it can waste up to 30 seconds. It resets the cycle it's on. Oops. The camera is also not particularly friendly. No, I had to learn to fight this boss with really janky camera. First three phases, I simply have to jump. Oh my gosh, what's going on? Okay. I just simply have to jump to the square that it's going to be in to skip the uh, soul jumps. Just like so. There it is. So is it RNG where all the switches spawn? Yeah, it's, complete random. it's completely random. Where he stops moving can also make some switches a pain to get to. And also depending on where he stops, it can make the fireballs harder to dodge. So that's why he tries to get him in the corner if possible. As long as I'm constantly moving, the fireballs really don't have a chance of hitting me. The only time they really have a chance of hitting me is if I'm moving straight away from Mad Jack. Oh, and he's going to choose certain switches because it'll hit the color of the platform Mad Jack is on. So if it's a white switch it's, uh, or a switch on a white block, it's to hit him on the white blocks. I was changing up my jumping for this phase. In phases four and five, his jumping changes. So I have to jump in a really strange way in order to make him fast jump every single time just by going back and forth between two platforms really quickly with ponytail twirl. You'll also notice he delayed his jump a little bit before going after the switch on that phase. It's because the laser he fires makes the uh, space it's, uh, it basically hard to deal with because it makes that blue pillar appear. He should be on white. Yes, he is. 
There it is. Alright. So, I got bad RNG for the final phase. The switch spawned really, really far away from magic, so I have to travel all the way across the room for the key. That actually loses a pretty decent chunk of time, probably like 10, 15 seconds from, from that alone. But that said, you, you just beat the hardest boss in the run, right? Yeah, I mean, I can stop now. All right. Okay. All right. So remember that cage I opened earlier? I can just simply jump to it right now. How you get that golden end normally is you have to become Tiny Kong and then like walk in a really long path out of bounds. Not out of bounds, but in like a pipe to it. It's just really long and stupid. <laughs> Good hit off the pipe. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna head to the production room now. And production room is gonna have a lot more access since you've turned it on, right? Yep. With production room on, I can now access Chunky's Golden Banana as well as DK's Golden Banana inside the uh, production room thing. Oh, um, another thing I failed to mention earlier, I did Tiny's bonus barrel. There's actually a switch to spawn it, but it's always there, so there's no need to hit the switch. I believe you, you did a d double jump there to avoid a falling animation, right? Yeah, if you just like slide off of the top of the production room here, you will normally take fall damage, but if you do a double jump, or er, his mid-air attack, you will avoid that. Is that to avoid the animation rather than the damage? Yeah, that's to avoid the animation you get when you hit the ground. It just takes a real long time to recover from. Another thing you can do to avoid that is to crouch fall. If you slide off the edge while you're crouching, you won't ever take damage. Oops, I had a bad camera angle for that. The first elevator here is really pointless. There's no reason to go on it. Yeah, the camera can be your worst enemy in a lot of cases, as is the case with a lot of early 3D games. And I guess in some modern games too. <laughs> Oops. In particular, this game actually in particular, it's not too bad when you're in bounds, but when you get out of bounds, it's basically you're not controlling the camera anymore. The camera doesn't know what to do once you're out of bounds. It can get really annoying sometimes. I try to manipulate the camera as best I can. Uh, it's no longer as dangerous if you fall, right? Because you picked up a teleporter. I hit the forward from earlier, so yeah, if I fall down, I don't need to climb back up. I can just simply warp up. There's a crouch fall I was talking about earlier. There's a cool little out of bounds in this room right here. If I take damage, just like that, I can. Oh, I guess I can't walk through. Let's try it again. There we go. <laughs> Doesn't save that much time, but. You can avoid uh, Strong Kong, and you don't have to watch the first time entering Strong Kong barrel animation. I think I remember you saying once that this clip was found by a Let's Player. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, it was found by a Let's Player on YouTube. <laughs> and you, Again, you can do that clip to void out and warp at the beginning of the level directly. Now we need to go to the upper part of Frantic Factory. I'm going to need quiet time for this next golden banana. It's one of the most difficult ones in the game. Um, people on the couch, so I need you to help me, though, because it's, it's really hard to remember. All right, we're ready. Yeah. OK, so there's a certain order I have to hit these numbers in, but I don't really know. It's, it's really hard to memorize. OK, you're going to want to start with the 13, I'm pretty sure. Wait, what's after two? What's after two? Uh, three. Okay, three. okay, okay. I got it. Wait, is that a six or a nine? Is that a six or a nine? Oh god, okay. No, no, no. What? Okay, okay, I think we're good. All right. 
What's what's after eight? What's after eight? It's it's six. It's six. six. No, it's nine. Okay, okay, I hit the six. I hit the six. Okay, it's ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen. No, yeah. no. Okay, there we go. I think. If, okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. We did it. Okay. Nice. If you play this game, you can learn how to count and how to spell. I'm surprised you didn't do a safety save there. Um, I kind of wanted to risk that one for the, for the viewers. They understand. All right, we have another blueprint here. <laughs> this looks so cool. <laughs> Chunky kills him ridiculously fast, so like some of the Kasplat kills with him are really awesome. You don't need Baboon Balloon here, you can just jump to the top of the doorframe and into the bonus barrel. Saves a couple seconds, just like that. This game right here is Welcome complete random game. where the slots are. Um, the best time I can get without missing one is 25, and the slowest time is 14, so hopefully I get good RNG. Um, this looks pretty average. The slot order is always the same, but the positions they're in are different every time. Actually, that was a pretty good one. 22, I only lost three seconds. That was better than I thought it would be. Yeah, how much RNG is there uh, at DK or no early levels run? There's really not a lot of RNG. Um, in main menu mode, I lost 10 seconds to bad RNG. There was RNG in Mad Jack and RNG in these bonus games. There's not really a lot in particular, though. Nothing like run ending. It's pretty nice, actually. Come on. Lanky climbs the ladder really slowly, so if you backflip, you can skip the long climbing animation. Okay, so the next level is Gloomy Gallon, but before we go there, there are a couple of gold bananas we need to clean up on first. I will say that is like the lamest ability in the game. The you can now pull levers. This ability. is Donkey Kong's <laughs> most expensive like upgrade he can get, and it's, I don't even know why it's a thing. It lets him play the DK arcade game, which really? is not a positive thing. Well, you need it for the Switch, don't you? Well, I I didn't know that. All right. <laughs> I, you learn something new about this game every day. But anyway, here's another going banana. There's actually a really broken trick in this game I won't be doing in this run. It's called Tag Barrel Storage. You can do a bunch of really nifty things about it. I don't have a glitch demonstration. There isn't really time for it, but basically you can do a bunch of crazy things like grab a different Kong's blueprint with a different Kong, and it will get the other Kong's blueprint. It's like if I did Tag Barrel Storage and kill that Kasplat with DK, I would get DK's blueprint, but then Tiny's, if I left the room and came back, Tiny's blueprint would still be there. It actually saves a lot of time, but it's very, very difficult to do in a run and not worth it as of yet. There's a lot of really silly things you can do with it too, just replacing assets with other assets. Like You can carry around and throw tag barrels and then jump into them. <laughs> you can also use different Kong's moves with, you can use like Rocket Barrel with Tiny, oh my. But yeah, you can use Rocket Barrel with ti Tiny, uh, Mini Monkey with Chunky, that looks pretty funny. Oh wow. Because the slots move so fast in this particular bonus game, I won't lose that much time. I think I'm going to lose like 10 seconds, even with those two mistakes. Alright. 
Even if I totally beat the game like that, the game tells me well done, so I'm okay. <laughs> it's nice when a game gives you words of encouragement. Positive reinforcement. Alright, another quick DK banana outside. As you can see, my ammo count is actually pretty low right now. I'll be getting some more refills in Galleon. Again, it's not like that. Like, it's not crazy to have this low of ammo at this particular point of the run. Just got to be careful where you use it. Up to this point, the Kasplats have been in pretty easy spots to get, but they start getting in really evil spots in Galleon. Oh yeah, there's a lot of the Kasplats here are in pretty bad spots. Alright, so Gloomy Galleon, if you remember the swim through vertical walls glitch I've been doing earlier, that glitch completely breaks Gloomy Galleon. You can go into like everything because the whole level's underwater. There we go. You're not normally supposed to access this area with low water level, but if I do a well-timed jump with Chunky, there we go. Okay, so the cannon game is pretty evil on VC. There's a lot of dead zone on the controller, so aiming this thing is a pain. Hopefully I can get it, that should be fine, yep. I can do a... Okay, I missed the quick shot. I totally missed it. Is that good? Nope. I think that was early. Okay, I'm going to play it safe. I guess I didn't play it safe. Dang. I had to do it again. On the su subject of Wii UBC, like a lot of the minigames actually got harder uh, because of the no lag. That's how the game works. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have to play that silly mini game again. Just pretend that never happened. All right, so we're about to start doing this mini game now. Yeah. Th okay, so this is the cannon game. The VC has a pretty big dead zone, so it's hard to aim. Hopefully, I don't like beef it. Man, I'm glad this didn't happen before. <laughs> okay, I think we got it. All right, we're good. First try, too. All right, so yeah, that's just one example of the Kasplats being really evil in this level. I didn't have too much trouble getting back up, but there are some spots in this level where that will lose a ton of time if they knock you off. Again, swim through vertical walls totally breaks the level. I can go to the lighthouse area immediately and get some pretty, get a pretty quick golden banana in this area. Oh, uh, Lanky is the only Kong that can use on guard. So Ooh. that's me. Uh, lasagna. Thank you. That's the only time you'll be seeing on guard though, sadly. Another quick blueprint for Diddy up here. I would normally shoot Kasplats with Diddy, but my ammo count's pretty low right now, so I'm just gonna play it safe. You can beat the entirety of Lumigallion with the water raised, I'm pretty sure. 
there's no reason to have the low water level in 101%. Yeah. Again, some vertical walls breaks the game completely. I feel, I feel like a lot of things break the game completely in this run. It's a pretty common occurrence. If I recall correctly, this game's development was pretty rushed to get it out the door, and they had to bundle the expansion pack with it because of memory leaks. Yeah. So they ended up losing a lot of money on this game. It was pretty rushed, and there was like a lot of things that were just like... It was pretty carelessly programmed, to say the least. This Kasplat's actually pretty evil. There we go. In some extreme circumstances, he'll just sit there spamming Shockwave over and over again, and there's not much you can do about it. Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead to the sunken ship. And I don't even need to explain it anymore, but these gates mean nothing to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're normally supposed to like play instrument pads or something and play on instrument pads, but oh well, I don't even know how you do it normally anymore. Alright, this Goldman is actually kind of hard to get. Okay, we got it. If you don't get it on your way in, it's really hard to get because of this camera angle. Why just, the camera angle decided to go all Resident Evil right there, who knows? Probably just to make it hard. Artificial difficulty. <laughs> All right, back up here. Licorice also has a quick gold banana in here. Tudos, how many people have asked you about uh, doing DK64 glitchless? Don't do DK64 glitchless. I feel like at some point you would just accidentally go through a wall. Yeah, at what point is the, does, do the, does the game end and do the glitches start? <laughs> when you turn on the game. Don't do D664 <laughs> glitchless. That's all I'm going to say. Not even once. Not even <laughs> once. But really, it, all it really adds glitchless is a, just a bunch of cutscenes. It's not really exciting at all. The glitches are what make this run. I can swim into the sunken ship from the bottom just like so to get to this one pretty quickly. This is the one of the largest golden bananas in the game, but the hitbox of it is really small, so I have to swim on like the bottom half of this golden banana in order to grab it properly. There we go. That fish just follow you out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I need that light to see. It's faster to exit through Tiny's entrance once you grab it. All right, so coming up here is probably like the first, I would say, dumb trick of the run. I need to ledge kick up to DK's Kasplat here, but like I was saying earlier, DK's uh, the Kasplats will do their wave attack and knock me off, and there's no way I can avoid it. I would just get hit down, and I would have to do it again. This ledge kick's actually pretty difficult because the water level's moving up and down, so I have to adjust my timing accordingly. All right, first try. All right, he wasn't a dick. Okay, we're good. If I throw out an orange as at the same time I hit the water, I can do a quick dive. It's pretty similar to the Banjo-Kazooie quick dive if you're familiar with it. Yeah, that the Kasplat there and the ledge kick on the first try was very fortunate. I've seen this take over a minute before just to get that. I've lost several runs to that Kasplat, so it's pretty fortunate that it happened pretty quickly in a marathon. All right, I voided out using swim through vertical walls so I can get to this Kasplat at the beginning for Lanky. Just like so. You have time for like a donation or two. Okay, we have $15 from Riley S. Hey, SGDQ 2015, this is my first time watching live. I'm so used to being able to rewind the good moments, and it's frustrating. Best wishes to all runners. 
You have fifty dollars from Anonymous. Save the animals. Who else is going to save you in fusion? Also, let's see that one hundred percent link to the path. Okay, so as I'm coming up to the boss fight here, I'm going to be using Tiny Kong, and the only reason I want to use Tiny Kong for this boss fight is so I can get her splat on the way out. These boss rooms can pretty much act as a free tag whenever I need one, because the tag rail is right on my way. All the characters have the same properties for in the boat for fighting this particular boss, except DK, which has a much slower boat. And the reasoning for that is he has like a seal racing minigame, and they slowed down the speed for his boat greatly just for that. All right, there we go. This boss fight is actually pretty difficult as well. This boss has no lag at all, so he shoots fireballs way faster, and his wave cycles come out way faster than they normally would on N64. So getting everything before the wave cycles is pretty hard. Additionally, VC Dead Zone makes turning a pain too. Oh wow. Alright, I'm gonna miss this wave cycle. Okay. The stars are always in the same place every time, so I can simply memorize where they are. And I'll just be able to do it quickly every time. Unless I miss the stars, and I won't do it quickly. He'll do a bunch of different attacks with every phase, but you just kind of ignore it and hit the stars as fast as you can. Alright, so if I line myself up correctly, I can get the key to spawn right on top of me, and that's going to save several seconds. And I think I got it, actually. And... Okay, we got it. Cool. Nice. nice. That's actually pretty difficult to line that up. And as I mentioned before, the only reason I fight that boss with Tiny is to get this guy right here. And with that, I am done with Galleon. Do the different attacks, like the hair swings versus the kick, uh, do different damage? I honestly can tell you. I think the kick actually does more, because it's in like the end sequence of the attack pattern. But I'm not really familiar with the normal attacks, because we barely ever use them. As you kind of saw in that last Kasplat, the hitboxes for your attacks are pretty generous as far as they go. The downside is the enemies also have pretty generous hitboxes, so their attacks can get you from a really ridiculous spot as well. This next glitch I'm going to do here is called Swim Through Shores. If I dive and mash B while close to a shore, I will just go right through it. All right, I'm actually gonna save state here. Save state is actually banned in runs, but because this is a marathon, I'm, I have a chance to soft lock getting this golden banana, so that's just for safety reasons. We don't actually accept that in our runs on the DK64 community leaderboard, and I don't think any Wii U VC run actually accepts runs with save states. Have some more time for donations here as we turn in another key. $20 from Anonymous, first time donating and second time watching SGDQ. 
Love what you guys are doing, and I hope everyone's having a good time. Here's to many more years of games done quick. Shout out to all the staff who made this possible, all the speedrunners, and my girlfriend Savannah for watching this event with me despite having no idea what's going on. $20 from Fungasm. Donkey Kong 64 and all Rareware titles around that area were my childhood. Appreciate the stream and glad I can contribute to a good cause while watching my favorite games. What a good name. <laughs> I appreciate that name. <laughs> All right, so here I can check on my crystal count. It's pretty good. I do need to save a lot of these for some of the later levels. All right, here's the hunky chunky barrel I spawned earlier. This will allow me to get two golden amps for chunky very quickly. Hunky Chunky is incredibly broken in this game, just like a lot of other things, but this one especially. Yeah, Hunky Chunky is, like, he has the fastest movement speed of any character by far. And you can use that to abuse some of the walls pretty badly. He can clip through essentially any wall in the game if you wanted to. I can just swim through shores again here to get his golden banana, same way we got Tiny's golden banana. And then once we're out of bounds, we can go straight to the golden banana I just spawned earlier. With that, we're going to head back to Jungle Japes. I only had Diddy and DK for the first time we were there, so... A lot of quick golden bananas in the first level. Um, I do want to mention this for instrument power. If you play your instrument on a pad, it doesn't cost any instrument power to play it. So that's how I was able to play like my instruments with any Kong on any of the pads. But that's intentional built into the game, not that, just... Yes, that's intentional. They all trigger events, too, when you do that. I think like the other use for the instruments is you can also use it to kill enemies, but it's not quite it's as useful. Pretty worthless, except for one instance in this particular run where I will be doing that, which is why I got the instrument power from earlier. Can you think of any more words that begin with an L? Uh, lovable, lamb chop. All right, lovable lamb chop here. I don't want to call him lovable lamb chop. That's just mean to my friend. All right, limousine has his blueprint and a pretty quick bonus barrel here. Welcome to bonus stage. All right. That jump can be a lot more deceiving than it looks. I miss that vine a surprising amount of times. Well Alright, so my coming back to Japes 2 is probably my favorite part of the run, and you're going to see why in just a moment here. Alright, so I'm going to go out of bounds and jump into like a standing state, take out my gun, walk back into water. You can now see that Lanky is holding his gun while swimming. That is not intentional in normal gameplay. And that's going to be important for this right here. <laughs> it's a great animation. <laughs> So if I dive, take out my gun, like he is walking on his back. <laughs> <laughs> and walls legitimately mean nothing to me when I am in skew walk, which is what this glitch is called. And how that worked is you're not supposed to normally have your gun while you're swimming. So if you ever like go into first person mode with your gun, the game doesn't know what to do with that. So it just tilts your Kong as you tilt your reticle up. 
or in any direction that you want, I guess. It can lead to some pretty interesting animations. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cool one. <laughs> the one bad part about Ski Walk is that I cannot jump. If I do jump, I will lose it, and that's actually a really bad thing, because I need to set up the gun skew again, if I do. I can do my B attacks and jump out of them and I won't lose it. I just can't like do a normal jump. I can also do long jumps. So also like falling into water is the other way you can lose the state? Yep. The water will tilt your Kong back into a normal position if you do. Sorry. I was going to ask if you're able to use this glitch uh, in other parts of the run. Um, I'll leave that as a surprise. <laughs> and now I can just like go around and collect all these normally slow golden ads very, very quickly with Skew Walk. Again, shout out to Conditioner for this reroute. This skew section wasn't very long, but it's pretty long now thanks to his suggestions. Nothing wrong with more skew walk. <laughs> but there's everything wrong with more um, Scion, which is the Kong that we have to do more going bananas with. All right, sadly, the skew section is done now. I need to do some vertical walls here to get to Chunky's underground section very quickly. I can hit both these switches at the same time, and it will cancel the first cutscene for me, just like so. Cutscenes can't stack on one another, they just cancel each other out. Alright. One more golden banana will get me 50, which is enough to get me into a fungi forest. That's one of the few instances where you can death warp in this run due to how the intro story glitch worked. And, and as oh. you can tell, death is not super punishing in this game. That beaver is normally close enough so he can damage me into that golden banana and skip the cutscene dance, but unfortunately he was very far away and I couldn't do it. Um, I'm sorry that beaver cannot bother you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that one. <laughs> All right, we're done with Japes. The first part of Fungi Forest is pretty self-explanatory, so you can read some donations again. Okay, we have $100 from Batitude. DK64 was the first game I ever played, and it took me 15 years to finish it. But here I am watching someone finish it faster than I could grab a lunch. Godspeed, you incredible man. We're blessed that you're choosing to use this power for good. $100 from Anonymous. Small tip from a longtime French viewer. And shout out to the French Restream. Quality comments at any time of the night and day. Shout outs to all the other marathon restreamers as well for the different languages. They put a lot of work into it. Uh, $50 from Mr. Max. Isn't it great when the menus do all the work for you? <laughs> anyway, put this money towards Oblivion Any% because that needs to be shown. $100 from another anonymous. Here's to playing games like a science. Pythagorean Theorem plus Murphy's Law equals awesome speedruns. Thanks to all the scientists and doctors without borders. $20 from Little Square. Stoked to see Tudos doing no levels early, my favorite DK64 category. 
Love seeing games done quick, Twitch and video games bringing everyone together for a good cause. I also would like to demand that 2DOS bring back the Ficus Cam. <laughs> Donation goes to Runner's Choice. $33.33 from Liam Connor. This event is amazing. Big shout out to all the runners and all the people behind the scenes. Who without this event would who without this event wouldn't be as good as it is. Also, DK hype. Thank you. Twenty dollars from Azuror. Shout out to Two Dos for his DK sixty four run. One of my favorites back in the day, and good luck to you. All right, so I'm collecting just all the blueprints around this giant mushroom. There's not really anything exciting about this part, but I guess there is this zinger in particular. If I get hit in a particular angle, I can get knocked off and I have to climb all the way back up and it can be really annoying. The other, one of the other uh, Nolos or the run of Arbiter always gets knocked off by that guy. Shout out to Zemo Arbiter. He didn't actually shoot any grenades at me that time. I have to do walk past him again though, so we'll see if that happens. All right, we're good. For anyone that was curious, the red ammo that he picked up is a uh, homing ammo. And I don't remember if it's needed for this category or not. I save it for Diddy's Kasplat there because it's on, Diddy's Kasplat's on like a sloped, um, it's not really a hill, it's more like a landing there. And he's above me, so if I want the ammo to like guaranteed to be hit him, I'll use the homing ammo and it will go up the slope for me. It saves a little bit of time. The swim the vertical walls here will get me to the uh, tree area quickly. The only reason I go back here is for the lanky blueprint. Fun fact about this area though, the rabbit race on VC is ridiculously hard in round two. If you make one small mistake in the rabbit race, you lose the run and you'll lose the race. Fortunately, I won't have to do that in this particular run. It's a very long golden banana. I remember seeing, uh, seeing you try and do it for the first time. You guys had a pause buffer to beat the game, oh. despite having done it so many times before. Yeah, it, was, it was pretty sad. Is that some... the less lag in the game? Yeah, it's still the less lag. They never, Nintendo never adjusted any of the, like, the movement speeds, so all the enemies <laughs> move way faster than they're supposed to. Sometimes that rabbit can get stuck on the Kasplat, so if you get lucky with that, it can be not as hard. All right, everyone's favorite part <laughs> of the run. Uh, Tudor's will have to time some uh, frame-perfect input, inputs to actually get this banana to land. And if he misses one, he actually loses the blueprint and has to recollect it. Here, you can do it for me. Oh, okay, all right. Can you pause buffer these? No, you can't pause from uh, main menu mode. Oh, man. You can still use the VC menu to buffer, but it's useless pretty much. Good job, Sadio. All right, studio. here you go. Good job. Four Kongs to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's three sections of all banana parts in this run, so I guess sit back and relax. All right. Good time to read some donations, perhaps? Yep. Okay. I'll yeah. do the frame perfect inputs in the meantime. We have $30 <laughs> from Anonymous. I couldn't donate during Ocarina of Time, and I won't be able to during Dark Souls 2, so I might as well do it during one of my childhood favorite games. Here are 30 bananas towards ridding the world of the Hollow Curse and seeing that Chrono Trigger 100% run. Big thanks to the staff and the runners for this awesome event. $10 from Shadowfied. Thank you all for this amazing event. Put this towards Pokemon Puzzle League, and please, everybody, make Pokemon Puzzle League happen. I can second that. Same here. Yeah, definitely. $50 from Anonymous. I haven't been able to watch much, but I love what you guys do and what you're doing it for. Keep it up. All right. So this boss you need Chunky for. So do you prefer the moon kick with uh, Donkey Kong, or do you prefer the camera buffer with the other characters? Moon kick is the greatest trick in this speedrun. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so this boss is a rehash of the Aztec boss. It's probably one of the longest boss fights. It's really annoying, and there's a bunch of phases. I really don't like fighting this boss. First phase features the same thing as it does in the first fight. And he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so there's actually a really, really long backstory to this particular trick. We call this Dogadon Quick. Um, basically, back in 2013, there was a user that claimed that you could beat this uh, boss with any Kong. In normal gameplay, you can only beat him with Chunky, because you need Hunky Chunky. And this particular user claimed that you could beat him with any Kong, but it turned out to be a fraud. Um, we kind of put it on the back burner and it was just, it was used as the butt of all jokes for our tricks for a long time. Um, this trick is actually particularly important because it allows us to access castle early. You can't get to castle early through any other means except through getting key five early. And you couldn't get key five unless you had chunky, but that trick I did there, um, shout out to Adam Whitmore, he found the setup for that. Um, it allows us to beat that boss of any Kong, so we can just we can leave the starting area with DK, go up to Fungi Forest, and do that trick with DK to get to Castle early. I actually do that in my 101% speedrun. Now, can't this trick also be used to some extent in the first form of that boss? Yes, it can be used in the first fight as well, but it only gives key five, so it's worthless to use it there. And we require in the sort that you beat all the bosses, so... And it doesn't actually beat the fifth boss by doing it on the second boss. It just gives you a key five, so it's not worth it in this speed run. Now, uh, do the different signage cues have different animations for uh, giving you the ban bananas? They do, actually. Um, some of them are a little longer than others. This one in particular, I think, t takes 14 seconds. It's more beneficial to hand your blueprints in in levels that have the shorter Snides animation. Um, uh, Aztec, Galleon, and Fungi Forest have the shortest animation, so we want to turn them in there. All right, we're done with Old Banana for now, but we will be doing that later. That is a weird enemy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is all I have to say. <laughs> Some of the enemies in this game don't make sense. Well, I guess nothing in this game makes sense, so I don't even know why I said that. I can get to that golden banana very quickly. You're supposed to raise this cage above the ground, but Simpha Vertical Walls uh, changes that. I feel like at this point, the only thing this game is missing is total control. <laughs> there's not really any method where you can, like, there's no really arbitrary code execution at all yet. Shoutouts to walls, there's legit not a wall there. <laughs> <laughs> they patch they actually patched that in the PAL and Japanese versions, but like I don't even have to do anything, you just walk through it. This game is very much on the honor system. <laughs> All right, this next trick has soft lock potential. And again, you can't use these in actual attempts of this category or any VC category. This is just for marathon safety. They're also fairly slow, too. Yeah, I mean, if, even if they're allowed, if you use them, you're bad, so <laughs> You've used two of them this run. All right, this is another form of skew. It's called damage skew. If you just get damage while you're swimming out of bounds, <laughs> and the reason why there's soft lock potential here is sometimes DK won't get skewed enough and I can't leave the area. So if I'm not skewed enough there, I can't leave that area and I'm stuck forever. And of course, because you can't save and quit, there's no option to get out. Yeah, no and, and again, if you didn't. For, if you weren't watching from the beginning of the run, I did a glitch at the beginning of the run called Main Menu Moves, and it, it, it gives me all the moves in the game for free, but it disables pausing, saving, and I can't die unless I fall into an insta-death zone. That jump I did to get to this platform is actually very difficult on 
Well, I don't want to say it's difficult, but it's kind of tricky on VC. There is so much lag on N64, so if you did that trick on N64, it'd be very, very easy to do. All right, another key hand in, so can do some donations. Sure thing. We have $20 from a fellow named Zach SK. It says, I'm donating during your speedrun. I just wanted to donate for 2DOS the champ from your friend Zach. Thanks, two bud. 2DOS, do, do you have the world record for this? Who is the <laughs> champ? The champ is John Cena. What <laughs> up? Here's $40. Hello, 2DOS. This is your friend Oblivion Walker from the DK64 community. Good job so far on the run, and I look forward to seeing the trick I discovered. I'm currently watching your run while trying to find new glitches on my PAL console. Best of luck and praise... And he writes some L word I've never heard before. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, $50 from Chris Armstrong. Oops. Haven't missed a GDQ in three years. Thanks for all the entertainment. DK64 was one of my favorites on N64, even with all its bugs. All right, so there is Chunky's instrument pad GB right here. There's a lot of, I'll give you a golden banana for free golden bananas in this run. I just love how they gave Chunky the triangle. It just seems really fitting. And it still has like the really wild camera angles yeah. when he's playing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're coming up on Crystal Caves here. It is by far the most difficult level in this run. Even like in casual playthroughs, the game just kind of collapses here. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the reasons why it's so hard is the falling, or the giant Kosha and his falling rocks. They appear in the absolute worst places in this run. So hopefully I don't get like knocked off and lose a bunch of time when they do happen. Okay. Well, the first one you have to make it appear, right? Huh? Ah, just never mind. Memeing. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> These instrument pads can actually troll you really hard sometimes. You can't, if you play your instrument at like the edge of the pad, it won't count it. And you'll lose like however long the instrument animation is. I think it's like eight, nine seconds. So you have to be like actually on the pad for, in order for it to count. All right, so the first thing I'll be doing here is going to get DK's blueprint. I will, it will be spawning the blueprint right as the Falling Rocks animation starts, so I need to make sure I get it before it happens. Otherwise, I have a chance of getting knocked off before getting the blueprint. Going good so far. All right, there we go. Got it. Nice. We don't actually kill this guy in any of our speedruns. There's no reason to. He gives you nothing by killing him. So we just kind of have to deal with the falling rocks. Uh, are the rocks random in how they fall, or...? They're random. If you stand closer to the edges of the level, they have a less chance of hitting you. All right, this trick right here is Scion's, like, it's one of the worst tricks in this run. It's just really dumb. I need to go at the very edge of this uh, baboon blast pad and get to the area here with his Kasplat without falling. You actually just barely make it. And the Falling Rocks cutscene happens right as you land. So what I do is play my instrument here that will cancel the Falling Rocks cutscene and kill the Kasplat at the same time. It, it's extremely risky to do it without the instrument there. Yeah, you can see he was about to shockwave you too, so it's just, it's just a bad situation overall. On N64, that's actually a very easy um, 
maneuver to do, but on VC, there's no lag, so you just barely have enough distance to make it. So your movement has to be perfect to the platform as well. I was playing the instrument there also while you picked up the music notes back in Factory? Yes, that's precisely the reason why I got the headphones in Factory. All right, another moon kick here. So there's a ledge oh, kick coming up bad. that's really, really difficult. That's after the boss fight, though, so we'll okay. save it for then. Do any other Kongs have a, like, moon kick sort of movement glitch? Um, Diddy has what we call a moon tail. It doesn't really work the same at all. I don't do it in the run, I don't think. In fact, I don't do it in the run, period. All right, there's the moon kick, and we're going to go to this boss room right here. Here we go. Now, is there just no wall up there, or does the moon kick let you clip through walls? There is. They didn't really program the wall up there. <laughs> it's strange, because it doesn't work on the other side of the room. <laughs> so I have no idea how that's programmed. Anyway, this is my favorite track in the whole game. Shout out to Grant Kirkhope. I hope he's watching. I'm sorry Sion couldn't be here to do the DK rap for you. Good dodge. Thank you. <laughs> Unfortunately, this boss does not have a quick kill yet. So I had to fight him normally. And as you can see, his attacks just take an obnoxiously long amount of time, and it just gets longer and longer as the fight goes on. I can use the barrel placement strats here like I did in the first Armadillo fight. And it will explode on him right as his head pops out. And again, I'm rolling into him right after he d I do this, so he can end the rolling phase immediately. easy to place the TNT barrels too close to his head, so he'll like squish them if they're too close. Is he uh, also another three hit boss? Uh, not really. He took three hits there and he's not dead yet. Back in the N64 days, we used to have lag reduction strats in this boss fight. I would just look at the crystal during this part. <laughs> there was a lot of lag when you, any enemy did wave attacks in this game, so it's just kind of a throwback for fun. All right, good blade fit. Okay, now hopefully I should end this final phase really quickly if all goes well. Alright, cool. So if I backflip into the uh, whatever missile that is, he will pop his head out right away and explode right on the TNT barrel at the same time. Alright. Kill the boss, you get this. <laughs> All right, so this next trick is one you should actually be applying for if I get it quickly. I actually played off the pad. This isn't a trick, this is just me being bad. So yeah, as you can see, I was playing like on the edge there and it didn't count. So this is the hardest trick in the game. I have to ledge click on a very um, slight edge here. And I have to land on like a pixel thick uh, ledge up there and then backflip to the golden banana. And it's kind of difficult because DK just walks off of that ledge sometimes for no reason. Oh my god, that was really good. Nice. nice. Wow. And it avoids that entire puzzle in that room. 
Yeah, that puzzle takes a really long time, so that skips the puzzle completely. Oh my god. <laughs> that zinger sucks. That's the worst zinger in the game. I think some of the other runners might disagree with you on which one's the worst. <laughs> oh, of course, but in my opinion, that's the worst singer. That one can, like, knock you off in the river, and that loses a bunch of time. As you saw me with... Well, I didn't get knocked in there with DK, but I just fell off, and it lost me a bunch of time. All right, I need to make sure I take Warp 4. Shouts to see Fox who didn't take Warp 4 when he's first started doing runs of this. <laughs> you will softlock if you don't take Warp 4. All right, cool. I need to kick slide, kick slide up the slope before the rocks start falling. All right. When the rocks fall when you're kick sliding up that slope, you have a very high chance of getting hit, so I'm glad I didn't get hit. There's a ceiling in Crystal Caves that's just higher than the rest of the ceilings, so you can just use that to fly out of bounds on the top of the level. <laughs> I've no, there's, I have no idea why it's higher than the rest, but yeah, I'm out of bounds now, and I'm gonna get to his blueprint pretty quickly like this. Everyone must have went home early when they were programming that part of the ceiling. I'm not sure if that was a no levels early pun or what, but okay. All right, so here's his blueprint. And the reason why you can softlock in here is that only Tiny's supposed to be entering and leaving here. So if I never tagged warp four, Diddy would be stuck in here forever. And the way you do that normally is you have to get the warp pads and jump to that yeah. uh, lone platform. Yeah, Tiny is supposed to become mini monkey and go in there, tag warp four for you. All right, here's the last part where the rocks can troll me really badly. If the rocks knock me off before I grab this blueprint, the blueprint will go away and I have to wait a minute for this guy to respawn, or he'll just knock me off like that. That works too. At least he didn't go away. Come on. All right. At least the blueprint didn't give me issues. Like a sweat himself did though. All right, last skull banana is pretty simple. Just swim through here. And grab this skull banana. And I'm done with caves. <laughs> so other than that kind of mishap with DK while I was going to the boss room, that was a pretty smooth cave, so I'm happy with that. How is the uh, competition for this game? It's actually pretty good now. There's a lot of runners. Unfortunately, none of them can make it here today. Um, I do want to mention that none of the people on the couch right now are runners of this game. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they're gonna do a good. They're doing a good job. All right. I could. I was trying to get a really tough moon kick to get that gold mana quickly, but I missed it. So I'll just do it the damage boost way. I've technically done one any percent run, but that's it's a pretty bad time, so it's not worth mentioning. I played DK64 DK four years ago with an arcade stick, and it was one of the worst games I've ever played. <laughs> 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 All right, so Creepy Castle's next. These litter levels aren't as long as you would think they are. I have most of the golden bananas I need, because I still need to turn in blueprints. So I'm not collecting a lot of gold bananas here. I just need to stop in these levels, get blueprints and boss keys, grab maybe one or two gold bananas, and get out. You can get a donation or two off here. We have an anonymous donation for $509. Nice. Donor simply says, God bless. And we, then we have a $10 donation from John Cena 65. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! yeah! Yes. <laughs> Donating because the runner knows who the true champ is. <laughs> da -da -da. We also have $128 from Nerd Guy. Awesome speed runs, awesome cause. Save the animals or don't, whatever. <laughs> Thanks everyone involved in this event for making this a thing.
We got a lot of good names coming in. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Creepy Castle, I'm going to start off by getting some blueprints here. This level is actually goes pretty high vertically, but um, most of the, the or all of the blueprints, I guess, are on the lower levels. So no reason to go to the top of the level ever. All right, so after I grab Chunky's blueprint here, I'll start doing some pretty neat tricks. Alright, so this trick, it, I wish I did it more in the run, but this trick is called air swim. You'll just swim through here, and you'll just be swimming above land when I come out on the other side, just like so. <laughs> 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 I can... Well, what? Okay, that was weird. I'll have to do it again. <laughs> As you can see, I can't swim through vertical walls through the tree, but if I swim through shores immediately after, I can get into it without doing the baboon blast game. It's almost like that wall existed for a minute. Eh, there's no walls in this game. Almost, though. Once again... Well, I guess there's a wall there now. Alright, there we go. No walls. <laughs> when it feels like it. This skips the sniper game. It's a pretty cool skip. That fairy can get in the way sometimes, and I'll miss the golden banana. Didn't cause me problems this time. There's another particularly hard trick coming up here. I have to do a ledge kick in the uh, air, I guess. If I fall down, I have to climb back up these stairs again. It loses a bunch of time. This ledge kick, kick wouldn't be in this game without. Uh, Lanky's blueprint being high up, so shoutouts to Lanky for again putting a hard trick into the run. All right, there you go. That wasn't horrible. All right, I think this is the last moon kick, unfortunately. Shoutouts to Mooncakes. If you like what you see, follow my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash I ate your pie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is K Rule Cutout. Or King Cutout, I guess is its true name. For the first two phases, He'll appear in random spots, but he'll never appear in the same spot every time. So if I stand in between two barrels he didn't appear before, there's a two-thirds chance I'll get a good barrel spawn. And that was good luck. All right, good luck again. I believe you use this uh, fight in 101% to unlock Kongs early. Yes, you can actually unlock Kongs through this boss if you do what I described to do Dogadon quick earlier with DK. You can just go straight to Castle, or Creepy Castle, and just unlock Kongs like this. You can actually unlock Tiny Kong like this in Glitchless Play. The person who voice acted the cutout must have had a lot of fun that day. <laughs> it's very important I don't lose Lanky Kong here. I need to get him, or I need Lanky Kong for his blueprint after this boss fight. That's the only reason why I did that moon kick to get up here.
If you see Langy just randomly exploding, that's because I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the real reason is because the puffer fish in the water have like gigantic hitboxes when they explode. So even if it seems like there's nothing there, I'll just like randomly take a hit for no reason. I don't know if you ever, if you ever said it. If you miss, you lose that con for the fight. It, yeah, if I miss a uh, shot here, I will lose that Kong. And then it cycles to the next Kong. In this case, it's tiny. Um, you can unlock Kongs this way because the game assumes you've had all the Kongs unlocked before. So it just gives you the Kongs even if you never unlock them. In this particular phase, K. Rool always moves clockwise, so it's very easy to figure out where he's going to be next. <laughs> <laughs> they look so shocked. <laughs> Their cardboard cutout got defeated. Who would have guessed? <laughs> By a monkey with a, a cannon. According to the lore of the story, it's supposed to be like K. Rule's last ditch effort to prevent the Kongs from getting to a ship. <laughs> but we skip all the lore in this speedrun, so I don't actually know. I could probably just make anything up. Our wall is part of the lore. All right, here's the Kasplat I was talking about earlier. This is the highest Kasplat in the level, which is strange, because this is like on like one of the lowest paths in the level. Oops. Oh well, it's Lanky Kong, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you can read some donations. Last bit of this level is just collecting blueprints. Okay, we have $5 here. Hello, this is me, the real Oblivion Walker. Shoutouts to the DK64 community, 2DOS, Isotarge, CFOX7, and Ring Rush. Also, shoutouts to the impersonator, may I never know your name. Shoutouts to all Oblivion re walkers, real or fake. We have uh, $50 from Seth Rollins. <laughs> Donating to remind everyone that John Cena is not at all the true champion. <laughs> 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 that, that was the day the Twitch chat died. We have $15 from Ashinka. This is my fourth GDQ I've been watching and my second time donating. This is such a great cause, and all of you great runners, commentators, and people behind the scenes make it all possible. Let's save those animals. Here's $50 from Linkiji. It says, walnuts, peanuts, pineapple smells, grapes, melons, oranges, and coconut shells. All right, that's convenient death orb to leave the level. And I will be handing in keys, so again, right. you can do more donations. All right, $50 from Colonel Blair 3. Good luck on the run. Congrats on the world record cat bag. $15 from Kai Sun. Well, looks like my sleep schedule is now messed up. Totally worth it, though, for this sweet run. Here we go. $5 from Kaylee. I just got back to watching the stream, and I'm thrilled to see that the donation total has surpassed half a million. Let's get things into gear and shoot for $1 million for Doctors Without Borders. I'll do what little I can to help as a poor college student. Best of luck to the runners, and many thanks to the tech crew and everyone else who has helped out. All right, so I need to get DK's blueprint in... DK Isles before going into Aztec. I need to get Chunky's blueprint in there. That's the only reason why we go back to Angry Aztec. We were never in Angry Aztec with Chunky at any point. You remember, you remember me talking about tag rail storage earlier. I could do it in the Frantic Factory lobby to get DK's blueprint, and it would save a lot of time, but it's a very, very difficult trick, and it's an hour in the run. Oh, I forgot to turn in the key. <laughs> I've done that before, so I guess we're going back. We have here five dollars from Devil May Care Four, who wonders. I just wonder what there Ganon's up to. Oh, and here we have a donation from Phil Collar for five hundred dollars. Says you are all doing, you are all doing an incredible important thing, even when I don't like a joke or two. Keep up the great work, and let's not forget the amazing cause this is going toward. 
All right, there we go. It's open now. I'm paying attention. <laughs> it takes both key six and seven to open the mouth. But uh, I believe uh, you unlock more levels uh, before you get those two keys. Like, you unlock a pair of levels at once, I believe? Uh, no. It's just that those two keys are both needed to get to the last level. All right, so now that I actually have the mouth open, you can actually get into Hideout Helm without opening the mouth, but that's banned because that'd be a level early. I'm going to damage boost to DK's Kasplat here. Okay, there we go. Sometimes he'll be in the way and I won't be able to get on the platform. He wasn't that time, so that's good. If you remember I was talking about lava earlier, this is the lava that insta-kills you. It's just really inconsistent with what kills you right away and what doesn't. I like how he didn't sing into it, he just like landed on it and just kind of scratched his head and died. Yeah, it's, <laughs> well, he's confused on how this game works, <laughs> just as I am and anyone else watching this game is. He's probably used to being invincible until now. All right, so there's another very hard skip here. It's called Wrinkly Door Skip. Tiny's Ring of Kong doors in the way of my rolling, so okay, I got it there. <laughs> nice. All right, so Chunky's blueprint is in the five door temple. I haven't actually spawned the five door temple switches, which you have to do with Diddy. So in order to get in there, I'm going to abuse Hunky Chunky and his amazing movement. This is what I need all the crystals for earlier, by the way. God, he's so fast. He moves ridiculously fast. If I backflip onto this torch, if I can do it. There we go. And clip out of bounds just like so. Head on over to Five Door Temple. And just kind of going <laughs> like that. <laughs> so yeah, now I'm in his Fadra Temple room. The only reason I need to go in here is for Chunky's blueprint. It's actually, this is a real long blueprint to get. And I was talking about Tag Barrel Swords earlier, like as a potential time saver. You can't actually do it in this level because you need to be close to, a uh, Kasplat needs to be close to a Tag Barrel in order to do it. And there's no Kasplat's close to a Tag Barrel in this level to do that. All right, so we're coming to the final O Banana turn in here. And the reason why we get all 40 blueprints. So the reason why we get all 40 blueprints is so we unlock the Snide's bonus mini games. And for some particular reason, by playing a Snide's bonus mini game, it will get me out of main menu mode and put me back into the actual story mode. And that way I'm able to pause, save, and take damage again. And the reason why I do that is because I can't escape Helm unless I can save the game and exit. You can't, uh, the way I get key 8, you can't actually escape the key 8 room unless you orange leg out, and you can't orange leg on the VC version. So I need to turn it off for your blueprints and do it this way. The fastest N64 route actually only gets 33 of the blueprints and orange legs out of Hideout Helm. It's by far one of the tenser moments in that run when we did it, but because it's on VC, we don't have to deal with orange clips anymore. You also had the potential to soft lock during that glitch on the N64, N64 version, correct? Yep. You'll just get stuck in the key 8 room and you can't leave. And that's why you need the orange clip to leave. It is impossible, as far as we know, to leave the key 8 room without orange clips, so... <laughs> So this fast, the fastest route will be, for now, to turn in all 40 blueprints and uh, save and exit out of Hideout Helm. So, uh, Tudos, do you like bananas? Because uh, I think we're about to get a lot of bananas. Why would you ask that, Studio? <coughs> Just wondering, because... I like apples. Oh. I don't, I don't see this game saying, oh, apple, though. 
Well, that's a shame. I assume this is a good time for donations? Yeah, this is a good time for donations. <laughs> I mean, we could just listen to O Banana nonstop. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a <laughs> right. We could do that. Or we could read donations. Okay. We have a $5 donation from Great President Dad who says, We have a $5 donation from Great President Dad who says, We have a $5 donation from Great President <laughs> All Dad. All right, back to the O Bananas. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, $20 from Akashik. Says shout out to Walls. Sorry he couldn't make it to SGDQ this year, <laughs> but maybe he can show up next year. <laughs> Donations going to Chrono Trigger 100% because that just sounds like a good time. Fifty dollars from Talbot. Thanks GDQ. This is probably my fifth time watching live, and it's such a pleasure. And always has a summer games done quick right next to my birthday. Despite that, I don't think I've been able to see the Super Metroid run. So, kill the animals, and happy birthday to me. $30 from The Hidden Ghost. Enjoying the Donkey Kong 64 run so far. First time watching SGDQ live and loving every minute of it. Just seeing all my favorite games being broken wants me to start speedrunning. I'm putting half this money towards naming Chrono Iwata in Chrono Trigger, and the other half to killing the animals. I saved them at AGDQ, I will not save them here. All right, we have two more O Banana turn sections here. Okay. $20 from Rory Doing Stuff. Been watching from Australia all afternoon with a few friends. Loving this N64 goodness. Thanks, guys. $30 from 02Ava106. Second year watching SGDQ Live, and I'm loving every minute of it. Good luck to all the runners, and keep those donations coming. $5 from William Estes. Thanks for everything you wonderful people do. Hype for all the runs, runners, donation readers, and behind the scenes people. May the RNG ever be in your favor. Right. Hmm? You can see me had 98 gold bananas. Tiny Kong has only two bl blueprints of intern in, so if I get two more gold bananas, I have all the gold bananas I need to beat the game. In the 90% run, you don't actually need gold bananas to beat the game, but in this category, you need 100, so hopefully I have that amount after this. One more donation here, $20 from Chaotic Soar. Have watched GDQ for the last few years now, and I try to donate every year. Good luck to all of the runners for the rest of the event, and in all capital letters, kill the animals. All right, so the fastest minigame to complete here is Beaver Bother. You just fall in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> so those wanting to have Beaver Bother in the run, there you go. Thank you. And now Thank that you. we uh, play, or complete that game, I can pause and exit the level, finally. So now that I have the ability to pause and exit, it's time to go to Helm. But you still have all your upgrades. You still have everything you got from the yes, beginning. Yes, everything I got from main menu moves I get to keep. So that is obviously a good thing. But you can now die. I can now die, but I'm really never at a point where I die. Shouts to Bulajin holding up meme signs in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what is this power of Chunky? Because um, I think it's amazing. <laughs> I it makes him invisible. Well, I guess just him, not his clothes. I it makes other things around him visible too. So I'm not really sure how that works. Okay, so I turned all the blueprints, so I have 50 minutes to complete Hideout Helm. I definitely do not need that time to complete Hideout Helm. So yeah, as it was mentioned earlier, you get one minute for each blueprint, plus 10 minutes by default, and any percent has no blueprints. So, um, A fun fact, um, you can't actually turn off the hideout helm timer. You can't shut down the blast within 10 minutes yet, even in a task. 
So you would have to get blueprints at some point if you wanted to turn off the blastmatic at one point. Alright, so if I align myself there, I can pull myself out of bounds. So I can skip the whole blastmatic sequence and go straight past the door that opens after you turn off the blastmatic. That saves like, uh, I want to say 10 minutes. And I kind of have to navigate my way around out of bounds here. There we go. If I fall in bounds, I'll actually have to reset because I will be stuck in the room if I do. Fortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. So if I jump to this particular direction, I should spawn right underneath the path I need to be in. Okay, there it is. Okay, there we go. For, one particular reason, for no particular reason, I guess. This corner here isn't very well made, so I can just walk through the wall. All right, so... <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get back in bounds. He's trying so hard. Floors and ceilings exist, just not walls. Okay, so you're going to see me flip my camera here. Uh, I'm going to wait a little more. Okay. So the reason why I flip my camera there is because there is a thing that is ex exists called okay. fake key. Basically, if your camera is not facing the door and window, you will grab the key, but it won't spawn in your inventory. So you actually would have to leave Hideout Helm and come back to get it again. For the longest time, we actually didn't know why that happened. And we um, Xcord actually figured out that you need the camera facing the door and the window in order for it to not be a fake key. Um, you can actually get fake key through normal gameplay as well, so it's nothing to do with like not using the door as intended. I, I believe it's actually shown up in GDQs in the past. Mm -hmm. it, it actually showed up in the 2013 90% run that Fox did. I turned in key three here last for some particular reason. Since I didn't turn in key eight last, K Lumsey is sad, so even though I freed him, so <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's not happy. <laughs> All right, so here's another cutscene skip. Um, you can see me resetting the game now. Okay. Since the game actually saves, it actually remembers that I did the things I need, so I can just go straight to the final boss after this. Here's where I would play the John Cena theme, but Studio wouldn't let me do it, so... <laughs> it would sound really weird coming out of your cell phone into the headset. That's all, that's all I said. <laughs> and in true Rare fashion, they got a final boss that takes forever. Yeah, this boss is... Uh, I want to say 11 minutes... 10 and a half to 11 minutes long on VC. And there's a phase for each Kong. It's... Um, it's roughly 70 to 80 seconds faster on VC, purely from time save due to lag. Most of that's from the tiny phase. I'll explain that when I get there. I'm going to be doing some camera techniques on some of these boss fights that aren't actually useful, but I'm just used to fighting the bosses like that because they used to be lag reduction techniques. They don't actually reduce any sort of lag on VC, though, because there isn't lag. You don't need to do the camera that I'm doing, it's just I'm used to fighting K. Rule this way. I'm just uh, checking out the crowd. Yeah, man. <coughs> Wait, were all the crowd fruit? <laughs> I actually never check. Maybe I should. 
Um, K. Rule always punches the same amount of times anyway, or he punches the same amount of time every time. Oops. I guess I wasn't counting that time. It's supposed to be five times. I can just memorize the times he punches before shooting. This is the easiest phase of the fight by far. I'm actually never paying attention to what the crowd looks like, and now it's bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's actually cool is like they're taking flash photography, and you can see it like with the bright lights. <laughs> I wonder what happened to the guy that voice acted like these lines. Like, has he gone on to do anything big? Reminder that um, some budget went to programming the flash photography, but not walls. <laughs> <laughs> This is the Diddy phase. It's by far the hardest part of the K. Rule fight. First of all, I need to do a backflip into this barrel as it spawns to save some time. All right, I got it. If I want to do this fight quickly, I need to find a particular angle that will let me get both of the switches at the same time. At very particular angles, I can shoot through the lights and hit both switches at the same time. All right, that was good. All right, I missed it there. If I'm too close to the light switch, I just can't hit the one in front of me. I'll just hit the one behind. It's also pretty convenient that you get infinite ammo and crystals for the final fight. Yeah, a lot of these, uh, you get infinite everything for most of the fight, for most of the uh, phases. All right, that went pretty smoothly. Not particularly great, but pretty smooth. This is also another diff uh, I wouldn't say difficult, but it's a little bit harder than the other phases. K. Rule walks around the ring in cycles, so I want to throw the bananas in very particular spots in order to make him slip quickly. And if I miss time of Thor just miss picking up a barrel, it's going to mess up the cycle, and I'm not going to know where he's going to be. The backup strat would, to, would be to throw the bananas straight on the music pads, but if I did that, he would hit me as well. That would waste a lot of time. If I threw the bananas on the pads, no matter where K. Rool is, is in the ring, he will get you, or he will slip on the go, or the uh, banana peel because of the position of the banana peel is relative to me. This is going pretty well so far, though. All right. Come on. All right, I'm going to play it safe here because I missed picking up the barrel. All right. You can go ahead and read donations for a bit. Okay, see here we have uh, $20 from a wall. It says, you just don't respect my boundaries. I don't think this relationship is going to work out. I'm sorry. So let's just save the animals and be done with it. We have $5 from the pun isher. It says, donating to help Doctors Without Borders because of the game without walls. Never got to play DK64 when I was younger, but glad to be able to watch it get completely conquered. Uh, Fifty dollars from Kirby Master. It says Kirby Master here. I'm disappointed in the lack of cat bags in this run so far, but otherwise, great job to us. Good luck with the rest of the run, and also good luck to Alta Biscuit on his Superstar Saga run. P.S. Alta is today the day. <laughs> Be sure to stick around for the Superstar Saga run. It is very good. The, the, hey. 
Anyway, the tiny phase here is by far the longest phase in the fight. I can just kind of do whatever I want and stand on these corners while he pounds the ground. All right, so inside here, I just have to shoot his toes with feathers. No lag in that part of the fight makes it go ridiculously fast. Yeah, in the N64 version, this particular phase lags to all hell. And on the VC version, it saves 30 seconds alone in this particular phase just because of all the lag. Did you have to have to find like safe spots and like look at the ground to avoid just all the toe lag? Yeah, I'll actually do it the way we used to do it on N64. This is how we would have to fight the toes to reduce lag. It was very annoying. You'd have to like memorize where the toes are at all times. Oops. However, it does actually make this particular cutscene make more sense because you have exploding orange grenades rather than feathers. Wait, look at the crowd. What is the crowd? Um, it kind of actually looks like normal people. I think it's, yeah, it's, I think they're people, but they do kind of look like fruits. Yeah, at first glance, it looked like fruit, yeah. <laughs> which would have been great. This is the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fruit so with cameras. Each time in the toe, it adds another phase of toe sections, I guess. I choose to believe they're fruit people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any bananas in that crowd, though. Well, I mean, do you think Kid Rule supports bananas? Well, no, he steals bananas. He does want bananas. Yeah, that's weird. This game makes no sense. Yeah, I, we got to double check the lore on the, the fruit crowd. <laughs> I, I guess the yellow ones kind of look like bananas. Are they holding bananas? I, there's, like, bananas in it. I think that's like supposed to be their arms, but we can call them bananas if you want. Well, they're fruit people, so they'll have banana arms. This makes sense. His shoes are way too big for him. <laughs> Just think, if he bought new shoes, well, it was over. <laughs> Tiny yeah. can't win. I wish I could move my toes like this. I just tried. How'd it go? Not well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, since I've injured all four toes successfully, that ends the phase. All right, this is the final phase. It goes pretty much how you would expect it, as if it were a normal playthrough. And hopefully I won't miss punches, because it costs like 25 seconds if I miss. I can use the shadow on the ground to time where I punch. When the top of K. Rule's shadow hits the eye in the middle of the ring, that's when I punch. It's actually very easy to miss the first punch. For the second one, the bottom of the shadow hits the top of the eye. I'm assuming if you miss a punch, you have to do the whole setup sequence again. Yeah, I'd have to do the whole phase again. It won't start over at one, but I just do the whole phase again. All right, final punch. Also get ready on time. It's coming yep. up pretty soon.
guess a couple shout outs before we switch to Superstar Saga. Just want to shout out Signa, the current any percent world record holder. He has beaten this game in 27 minutes. Shout outs to Vulagen, who is still holding up the memes sign. <laughs> it's just a sign that says memes on it. <laughs> um, shout out to the rest of the DK64 community who could not be here today. Um, there's a lot of you, so if I miss you, I'm sorry. Ring Rush, Xenernicus, C Fox. Xcord, Isotarj, um, TJ, Kiwi Killer, Hipster for 20, Conditioner, Emo Arbiter. Um, did I miss any? MCAT, Connor75. I think I got most of you. Sorry if I missed you. Adam Whitmore, I guess, too. And uh, I guess shouts to the Rickery as well. All right, that is DK64. I hope you stick around for Superstar Saga. It is a great speed run. And thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll never see what happens. No. All right, thank you very much, Tudos, for that great Donkey Kong 64 run. Up next, we have Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga with Alta Biscuit. But for right now, we are going to throw to a sponsor message from our sponsors, Tiny Build.